Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of mprugs.com. My name is Mike. I'm the moderator in the series of videos that is all about handmade, not just Persian rugs, but carpets from around the world. I welcome you to our channel and I hope you and your family are doing well. In this video today, I want to introduce you to a type of design that is extremely popular, especially with clients in Europe. I have noticed myself over the decades that our European clients, they like this, what is known as a garden design. Um, I have it in my website at mprugs.com and I call it the tile pattern. But in Europe, this is also known as a garden design. And it's a beautiful pattern that's been around for centuries. In my personal opinion, um, I always looked upon this design as being something that you see in ceramic tiles. And so I called it the tile design when I started my website. But being that we just recently got this beautiful, very high quality masterpiece right here, which is a pure silk gom rug. It was made by the Zohe weaving family. Um, it measures seven feet by 10 feet, uh, two meters by three meters. Normally when I use my backboards, I would hang up the rug like landscape format, so horizontal, so you can see the whole rug. The problem that I'm having is, it really in terms of being able to show you the details and to show you the tile, well, I call it again, the tile pattern, the different floral designs and everything, I have to keep the rug in a horizontal um, position which is why you are not able to see the whole rug. And I do apologize. Now what I've done here is, here's the picture of the whole rug, but it doesn't even come close to doing it the justice that, is deser that it deserves. So what I'm gonna do is, um, as I always done, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background on, about the tile design, because this is actually one of the few types of designs that you can uh, have two, two directional. It is ideally a single direction, uh, directional type of pattern, but I've had it, seen them in homes where people have put them in the living rooms and it doesn't really matter from which side people look at the rug. They see a beautiful pattern, but it is also something that is quite common in many different types of rugs. So um, just to give you an idea, I'm gonna show you a few examples of the garden design in different type of rugs. Then I'm gonna come back to you and give you a little bit of details about this piece right here. And then as always, I'm gonna wrap things up with a final statement. So. Um, as always, if you like our channel and you enjoy the Persian rugs, please click that subscribe button. It helps us out. Also, there is a comment section below as well uh, if you have for questions. And if you need any information about the rugs that you're about to see, please feel free to visit us at mprugs.com. I also put a few links in the description. Don't want to make it overwhelming. But um, just to get things started, I'm going to step behind in the background. And the first rug of the tile pattern design that I wanted to show you, and this is a beautiful mood rug. The moods is one of the types of Persian rugs that are also featured in my website and I actually have a video where I talk about nothing but the mood rugs. I mean, this is just an absolute, it's a very large rug. It's an unusual because of its size and colors. But as you can see in the mood details, 
that you can see the garden design. This is a typical, good, solid quality Persian rug. But again, um, it's not about the mood rugs. In this video, we're talking about the garden design. Then the next, vid, uh, the next rug here is, this is a Naim. This is a very high quality, what is known as a Shishla, a Sixla Naim. For those of you that are new to Persian rugs, if you want to learn about the Naims, I have made a whole bunch of videos where I talk about the Naim rugs. Check them out on our channel. But as you can see here, again, there is... Um, very similar, you can see the same similar pattern um, in terms of the designs, the features that you see in the tile pattern. And um, again, I'm thinking tile pattern, it's actually more of a garden design to keep it correct. Then here we have a cashmere rug. The cashmeres, these are the Indian silk rugs. And again, you can see a variation of it, but you can also see how the garden design, how it goes from one country to another almost, but you can see the similarities in the rug weaving cultures and in the designs. But to get back to Iran, I'm going to actually end it here with this rare Bakhtiari. The Bakhtiari is a rug that I'm actually going to be featuring soon. Um, and again, this is something that was actually just today. As I'm making this video, I had one of our viewers, I believe he's a subscriber, email. Um, he left me a comment and said, Mike, can you make a video about the Bakhtiari rugs? Well, I am listening. So here you have a beautiful Bakhtiari. And it has that, as you can see by the close-up of the garden pattern, beautiful. This is a classic wool. This is almost like borderline tribal. Just an amazing piece. Um, but it's a beautiful rendition of what a classic garden design should look like in Persian rugs. So... With them all out of the way, I want to come back to you and give you a little bit um, of a history of it. This has been going on for literally centuries. The garden design, the tile pattern with the garden design, it's similar. Um, it predates the gombat design. This is something that you have seen in buildings throughout the Middle East. Um, everywhere from what we call Persia down to even North Africa, Morocco. And you'll see that there is places, um, this tile was obviously, um, and again, I keep using the word tile, um, the garden patterns, and it's very, very common. What you will notice is that you have the patterns and if you look at it closely, you will see um, similar, there's almost like a symmetry. You have the colors. The colors keep repeating themselves. Sometimes in some of the rugs, it's every third one. Sometimes, like in the case of this piece right here, it's actually randomized. And the way I generally know when it's something is randomized, um, look at the number of tiles that are in the design. If it is, like it is in this case right here, eight wide, and you have three different designs, chances are you are going to get an odd, there is no pattern to it. It's like almost like a random pattern, but I've learned over the years that they generally do not put the same pattern next to each other. There's generally speaking different patterns, but it's kind of like randomized. And then the other thing is also depending on the size of the rug, you can have 
a lot of them, like for example, in the case of the Bakhtiari. But if you look at smaller pieces that have the garden design, you will see that sometimes you may only have two. Um, generally on the real small ones, you have four. You have two at the top and two at the bottom. And then it just goes out from there. But the beauty of the garden design, like I said, what I really like about it is when you lay it on the floor, it almost looks like ceramic tiles. It's like having a tile floor. Even if you have a table and furniture and everything, most people don't really consider it to be a one directional design unless they really focus on it. Then they notice the flowers. Um, as you can see here, I just took a random snapshot of this Gomrak and you can see the tile pattern. You can see in the close-ups how when you're really close to it, you can see how it's one directional. But generally speaking, it is not considered to be really a one directional rug. So basically, there you have it. The garden design is something that's really popular. Like I said, for some reason, my European clients like them a lot more than my American clients. I honestly can't tell you why. There's something about it just, um, I guess, attracts them more. So now, as I'm always going to, what I always do is I always have a second part to the video where I get behind the camera. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to come back to you with my final words. I want to show you some of the features. This is such a beautiful, amazing, stunning piece. And um, there's also something unique about its signature. So I'm going to see you again here in just a little bit from behind the camera. So as always from behind the camera and what I've done here is I want to show you from the bottom to the top. This is just an absolutely outstanding, just a piece of art. That's really the best way that I can put it. For those of you that are fans of the pure silk gom rugs, if you like the very fine Persian rugs, you're absolutely going to love this piece. Um, as I mentioned to you earlier, we're talking about a rug that has about 900 knots per square inch. This is an extremely, extremely fine piece. But what is also unique about this piece, and before I talk about the design, and as I like said, I'm just zooming in and out of here, um, just wa wandering around basically showing you the different tiles. What is really unique about this is the signature because generally speaking you have something like and remember keep in mind that in Farsi and Iranian it's right to left so you would have something like Iran, Gom and the name of the weaver. But in this case and I do have to apologize as I have I think mentioned in some of my other videos I actually do not know how to read and write in Farsi. Ich komme aus Deutschland. I was born and raised in Germany. Yes, my parents are Iranian, uh, but they, they, they only taught me how to speak the language, not how to read and write it. So I have to rely on pieces of papers. And this means right here, Tache Tolit Gom, uh, I'm sorry, it's Tache Tolit Iran Gom Ali Zohre. Good Lord, I probably have screwed up the pronunciation in every which way as always. But what this means is that it's design and weave. Iran, Gom, Ali, Zohre. It's the first two words that are of tremendous value. In the Persian rugs, and I have talked about this in some of my other videos, you generally have a designer and you have a weaver. In some of the bigger workshops, they have, for example, designers that work for them. They draw the rug on paper, and then the weavers who weave the rugs. This generally means the design and weave, that this is someone like, for example, Habibian, 
who is a master, actual master weaver and actually does both, which is actually not common. So I just wanted to point this out. Ali Zohe, we have purchased a few of their gom rugs in the past. Generally speaking, they only make the very fine pieces. And this piece right here, like I said, we, when we were able to purchase this recently, as I'm just going to just keep walking around with it, you can see there's really not much for me to have to add. This is just an absolute gorgeous masterpiece. But And as you can see, as I mentioned to you earlier, um, let me put my paper away. You can see the designs. You can also see how the colors change depending on the lighting. And I mean, this is what pure silk gum is all about. And as I mentioned to you, even if you have a rug with this type of design lying on the floor, if you look at it, I'm just going to turn it around. It's really, it's not an issue. On some of the rugs, like a hunting design or obvious pictorial design, um, it becomes a much bigger issue than with a small, um, and again, like I said, for me, this looks like a ceramic tile pattern. It's absolutely beautiful when you look at it. Um, really well done. But I wanted to give you a little introduction to this popular design. So here you have it. So now, as I'm always going to do, I'm going to come back to you with my final words. So I hope you liked this video about the garden design in Persian rugs. And not just Persian rugs, but I guess carpets around the world. So as always, as I mentioned to you earlier, if you like our channel, if you're into Persian rugs, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, I always do my best to try to answer as quickly and as many as I can. This video channel of ours is my hobby. This is not something that pays our bills and all that, so I try to keep it low budget. This is a spare time thing for me. I don't have anyone that helps me with the editing and everything. So yes, the videos are a little bit amateurish, but this is just who, we are, who I am. And so I hope you enjoyed it. I wish you and your family the very best. And I look forward to coming back to you with many more videos to come. Best wishes. Take care. Bye-bye.